Mr. Secretary, great to be with you, and thank you for your testimony and your enduring commitment to public service. The members of the uh, Alzheimer's Association are here. We're grateful for your, for your presence and the determined advocacy that you bring to our offices year after year. We're grateful and continue to work with you. Mr. Secretary, I'm going to talk to you about long-term care in the context of two settings. I'll mention one, but I really want to ask you about the second. The first is in this broader context of what can only be described as a caregiving crisis when it comes to seniors, people with disabilities, and I would include children in that as well. We are in that crisis, and one of the, one of the paths forward, I believe, not, not the only, but one of the paths forward is uh, greater investment in home and community-based services, so-called HCBS for seniors, people with disabilities, and the, work, or the workers that do that heroic work. I have legislation to do that that I know you're aware of, the Better Care, Better Jobs Act, and we have much to do on that. Uh, but I want to set that aside for a moment and talk to you about the, the other setting, which is institutional settings, long-term care, skilled care, and a nursing home by way of the leading example. And in particular, uh, the special focus facility program that um, I've worked to oversee for a number of years to make sure that we're, we're investing in oversight that's particularly um, centered on those facilities that have had the greatest problems. We've, when you look at that number, about 97% of nursing homes are not on that list. That's the good news. The bad news is the 3% that are uh, have real problems in terms of care. I was pleased to see that there's a 39% increase in funding for survey and certification activities of nursing homes in the President's budget. Uh, I'm grateful for that. But I also think the fun more funding is needed to expand the special focus facility program. How would additional congressional appropriations toward nursing home quality and oversight be beneficial to better protect residents in these facilities? And Senator, um, thank you for focusing so much attention on this. While I think most Americans would say it's great that the majority of nursing homes don't fall within this program, there are some that do, and there are Americans who are in these facilities, and we have to make sure that we protect them. So the money that the President proposes would help us do more oversight. It would help us do the surveillance to find out if these uh, poor performing uh, nursing homes are increasing services and improving services, and it would let us take action quicker so we can prevent a mishap, a, an accident, or perhaps death to occur in one of these facilities. And I'll submit a question to the record with regard to the plans to revise the program, the Special Focus Facility Program. My second and final question is about uh, countermeasure uh, injury compensation. We know that 700 million COVID vaccines were administered in the country, but there are instances where there are injuries in, uh, related to any vaccine. I know they're rare, but they, they do happen. I was encouraged to see that the HHS budget requested significant increases in funding for administering two programs, the, the Countermeasures Injury Compensation Program and the Vaccine Injury Compensation Program. I've written to uh, Administrator Johnson at HRSA earlier this year about the Countermeasures Injury Compensation Program, and I want to make sure that we reiterate the message from that letter that individuals with these COVID-19 vaccine injury claims are waiting too long for adjudication. Um, so we want to make sure that people aren't waiting years for that kind of compensation. What additional resources or authorities do you need in order to speed up the process and respond to these claimants faster? Senator, your help in getting that money across the finish line will be indispensable because we do need to try to move through those backlogs. And one of the things that we would do is if we get additional resources, it try to, is to try to make some process improvements in, in trying to get those claims through. So we would set up, for example, an injury table that lets us better target who's being harmed, what the issue is, and whether or not they qualify for some compensation. But the, the biggest issue right now is just having the, the wherewithal, the resources to get through the number of cases because all these Americans deserve to be compensated if they were injured. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. 